Hello friends, it's me the MC and welcome back to another C tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about different computer systems, different computing environments and then we are going to learn about how to create and then we are going to learn how to run a program and then we are going the steps involved in running the program and then we are going to learn about the algorithms and flowcharts. So let's get on to the video. Well, we can broadly define a computer system as a composition of input output devices and then a processor and then we'll be having some auxiliary memory for it. So let me draw it and show it to you and then it'll be a bit easier for you to understand. So we'll be having some input devices some output devices and we'll be having some auxiliary memory so what happens over here is that let me draw it and show it to you so what actually happens is that you will be writing your code or else let's say when you are playing a game or something so you will be giving some inputs to the system so these inputs will be taken by the system the system can be directly said as a in nowadays we are using cpu what it actually means is that it is abbreviated as a central c for central p for processing and u for unit so it is a combination of of an ALU, a CU and then some memory management hardware. So it has an ALU, I'll be going in depth about each a bit later, a CU and then we'll be having some memory management units and then after the processing is done the result should either be stored in the memory or it should be displayed to the monitor so let's say we are playing a game so we'll be giving inputs from our console or we'll be using a joystick or a keyboard and mouse and then the processor process it and then we might get the outputs on the screen or we can even store it so uh, if it is stored then it is called auxiliary memory auxiliary memory so what is this auxiliary memory auxiliary memory is a memory which is like it is not the main memory under the central processing unit this is a secondary memory which like it is of like your hard disk or solid state drives so this can be used to store your memory and then the actual memory which is under the control of CPU is the random access memory or the main memory. So it is a volatile memory so we can't store our data in it. So we will be using our auxiliary memory. Auxiliary memory is like we will be using hard disk, we will be using hard disk, solid state drives and then we can even use our CD-ROMs and then we can use our USBs and pen drives and all those things and in olden days people used to be using this floppy floppy kind of thing but then nowadays people are not using these things this comes under auxiliary memory coming to the inputs as I have said they can be of type joysticks joysticks and then we can even use keyboard and mouse keyboard and mouse we can be using these and then coming to the outputs this can be your projectors projectors and then it could even be your monitor so these are the different things which a computer system consists of so all the combination of all this is regarded as a computer system and then th this is the first topic and then coming to the second topic which we are going to be dealing today is different computing 
environments so computer environment is a thing where you will be working on a computer a computer environment is a thing where you will be working on a computer but then the surroundings or the environments uh, decide the type of the computer which you are be using like this can be again divided into different types like will be having your personal computers you can have your clients and servers computer which are shared on a common network which could even have your cloud computing nowadays which has become a pc which has become a latest trend pc stands for personal computers personal computing and then the second thing is your client and server server thing so what in this happens is that a server will be there common common like common processor to all the systems which serves the required data well all right you could regard a client server system as shown here so there would be a single server or a few number of servers and then all all the clients named c1 c2 c3 and c4 and c5 over here would be connected and interconnected with a common server so the common server what it does is it delivers the required data for the clients under it this system is called as client server system and then coming to the next system what we have is a time shared computing in this time shared shared computing what we do is that we have a common system and then like uh, in a day a few hours is given to a single person like and in the next few hours are given to another person like we have a single computer and then a different time slots are given for different people and they'll be using a common hardware that is time shared computing and then coming to the last one we have our cloud computing in this cloud computing what happens is that we'll be having a system and then our data will be stored in somewhere in other databases which are like which are far away and which we can't see but then when the data is required it will be coming so in this way as the data is not seen it is regarded as cloud computing so like we will be thinking that the data is coming ever from the clouds so it is regarded as cloud computing these are the different computing environments which we have as of now and then coming to the next topic so as i have said that computer system will be having like it will be having an input output and it will be having an auxiliary memory and a processor so and again we can also divide the computer system depending on the physical components and the software components let me divide a like a computer has something called as both it has a software and a hardware in it so a hardware is something like let, let me write it down a hardware is a physical component components which you can be touching and which you can be using to give input output and then all those things hardware like we'll be having our keyboards mouse with monitors and all those things which we can physically touch and coming to the software software can be assumed to be as a internal like internal soul of the computer so it can't be touched but it only can be seen in action so you can regard these both things as in analogous to a human body a human body has a hardware of physical components like hands legs and all those things and then the soul can be regarded as software which we can't see but then we can feel its existence in this way a system has both hardware and software coming to the software of a system a software of a system can be again divided depending on the type of the software written in the system 
so in a system software like the software can be divided again into as a system software or else it can be application specific application specific software in system software the software which we see is generally like operating system we, we can have our operating system which let, let, let me make the word operating system a bit more easier operating system is a software which like it maintains a bridge between the user and the hardware which is in which is in the system so it it meant sorry the software in the system it it links between the user and the software so the system software may has again os and then what we have in the in this is that we'll be having your system drivers might be there and then we also have like system support softwares like we'll be having some windows firewall or uh, let's say in the windows systems and all those things come under system software and we even have some development softwares which come under this system software coming to application specific softwares like pr see the presently we are using an application named paint so this paint in this paint we can only do painting like we can't uh, we can't write a mail in it and we can't <laughs> it will be hilarious if you write a mail in this and if you send to your friend and in a similar way in excel sheet you can't draw something so some applications are specific by their software so these applications specific softwares are those kind of softwares like and then coming to the classification these application specific softwares are general purpose and all those things general purpose in the sense which can be used for like multiple tasks in that way and then specific as i said it can be used for doing only one thing and then the next concept which we are going to be learning today is that how to create or else the steps involved in creating and running the programs so as i have said i think i have already said this in the previous video the steps involved in creating creating and running programs so the steps involved in this are my mouse became a bit laggy all right the steps involved here are editing let me make it a bit slower compiling compiling the second step is compiling the third step is linking linking loading and then the next step is your execution execution let me make it a bit easier so these are the different steps which you will be using for any program or else any software in in general to execute so first editing in the step of editing what we do is we'll be writing our source files so your source files will be written in this step and using your different programming languages programming languages we'll be using different programming languages like c we could use c plus plus we could use java we could use c sharp we could use javascript and then we could use boo we could use or in the, in the similar way we'll have we'll be having many programming languages and we'll be writing different programs and those will be stored in the source files in the process of compilation it will be converted as i've said in the previous video it will be converted into machine language so as the machine can only understand machine in the sense uh, like the system which you are running on it so from here i'll be regarding the machine or the system anonymously that's the thing and then coming to the next step of linking in the linking step what happens is that your library files will be linked to your machine code 
and then the executable will be created so your executable will be created in this step after that that executable should be loaded which if it was not there in your main memory so we can as i have said that in previously we can't store everything in our main memory so as it is volatile so we need to have some secondary devices like your hard disks or all other things so it should be loaded loaded from your auxiliary memory to to your main memory it will be loaded in, into your main memory after the loading is completed and then the charge is then given to your cpu so what your cpu does is that it takes that files reads them one by one which were there in the main memory and then it starts the execution this is the way in which a c program or any program in general can be laid out and any programs can be run that is the thing about the creating and running of programs and then coming to the evolution of softwares previously in olden days when the computers were first built we didn't have all these graphical screens and all those things in those days what we used to have is called as a console let me show it to you it nowadays we are calling this as our command prompt so in olden days people used to be working only on these consoles which are like pretty not good to see and all those things so we used to not have like any graphical things and all those things everything used to be black and white over here that was in the olden days and then people made it evaluate into advanced systems this system is called as dos dos which is which can be abbreviated as disk operating system so that operating system is of 32 bit and it will be operating on your disks so it was called as disk operating system after this dos we have evolved into different kinds of operating systems coming to the track of windows we we used to have windows 98 windows xp and, and then a series of windows and presently we are having windows 10 coming to other types of operating system we also have something as called unix and linux and we also have something called mac os so the apple uses the mac os in the similar way as i have said in the client server systems people generally use this unix operating system it will be like open source open source means that any person can freely download or upload their softwares that is meant by open source software so the unix is an open source software which can be downloaded and then client server interactions those operating systems will be done in that unix operating systems so the the screen which we are now seeing is called as graphical user interface which is abbreviated as gui g u i graphical user interface so as we are able to see the graphics and then we the users are able to use it so it is user and interface is defined as something which is in between two things so the interface here is in between the user and the system so it is a graphical user interface and then that is it for this video in the next video i'll be explaining you about different commands which we'll be using in the co command prompt and then we'll be going into the number system in the next video thank you for watching this video bye